Hello, I'm Sean Richards of Not A Yes Man's Economics. And what I want to speak to you about today is interest rates. If we start with my home country, the UK, the Governor of the Bank of England yesterday said that people should expect more interest rate increases than what markets have currently priced in. Now that's an interesting phase in, in various respects. Firstly, he has a track record in this area, there's something of deja vu. And what I mean by that is that he promised interest rate rises in the past, most famously at the Mansion House speech in the summer of 2014, but his next actual move was a cut. So there's a problem there with the modern era of what central bankers call forward guidance. If we broaden that out, quite a few of them are in that situation currently. If we look at the United States, of course they have been raising interest rates but are now not so sure. And there's the issue of the European Central Bank and indeed the Bank of Japan that have seen slowdowns but already have negative interest rates. So they're in particularly um, difficult water. Returning to the UK, the particular issue for the Bank of England Governor, Mark Carney, was the fact that the news that had come out yesterday morning was an economy not growing very fast. If you look at the business surveys done by market, they think that the economy is growing at a quarterly rate of about 0.1%. So not very much at all. And we know from the official figures that the economy shrank a bit in December. So in fact, if you looked at it like that, again, we'd be thinking of an interest rate cut reminding us of uh, Governor Carney's track record in this area. Moving on as to why he might have said something like that, it's something where, to some extent, he's got caught in an awkward place, and some of that's his own fault. The issue over Brexit has got very polarised, and he's put himself on one side of the camp, which is a bit awkward when you're supposed to be independent. More particularly, back in November, he released scenarios, but he knew people would take them as forecasts, and the UK economy, say, shrinking by 8% under certain things. And now about 2 or 3% has come off that, so he's saying it all looks better. Some of that he's trying to present reflects well on him, as we've had an announcement around FX swaps with the European Central Bank and other moves that reduce things down. But it leaves us at something of an impasse. A particular problem in the UK, obviously Brexit may happen at the end of next month. If it does, we don't know what form, so there's a lot of uncertainty there. We do know, however, that in reasonable falls in the pound, Mark Carney won't in raise interest rates. In fact, on his track record, he'll cut them. So there's a problem. Only this morning, I see news services coming out again talking of Europe, and again still somehow talking about interest rate rises, having somehow missed that the European economy seems to be rolling on at a growth rate of about 0.2% per quarter. So quite a lot down on the 0.7%, that they were considering to be robust growth, resilient growth in um, central banker language. So this poses quite a few questions here as we look forwards. I think that central banks are getting themselves ready to ease and are desperately hoping that the economies will pick up and that they won't have to, particularly in Europe and Japan, as I said before, because of course they're starting from a situation of negative interest rates. If we look around the world, bonds with negative yields have been growing in size again. I think it's around 11 trillion US dollars, although there's some debate on how that's counted. So I've given you a fair few bits to think about through that. Let me give you something else heading towards the trend of maybe lower interest rates. Growth in Australia, that keys into a few things under its nickname of the South China Territories, because we know China is slowing, and yet growth from the final quarter in Australia was only 0.2 of a percent. So slowing there, maybe signs of slowing more, the whole situation spreading all around the world, yet the forward guidance of most central banks is telling us exactly the reverse. So if I was you, I'd be ready for quite a vault fast quite soon. Thank you.